Assalamu alaikum everybody, I'm Mariam and welcome back to the Flopsy Family YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be doing a little bit of a science presentation and mine here is on small animals in Ontario. So I have chosen a few different species and types of different animals in Ontario that I would like to learn, that I learn more about and that I think are really interesting and cool and I just thought I should share some of those animals with you. So um, first, before we begin, I just want to do a verse from the Quran on animals and how important they are for us. So this verse is, There is not an animal that lives on earth, nor being that flies its wings, but like you they form communities, and they shall all be with Allah in the end. Okay, so here I have a little presentation. And uh, my objective of this project was, I want to find out as much about these animals as I can. I think they are able to do so amazing things for the world and prove that they matter. Okay, so first let's start with beavers. They are very cute as you can see here. Together, beavers make wood houses out of fallen logs and also mud to provide still water and to hide from predators. They make the entrances underwater so it's hard for most animals to get in and their lodges have dome-shaped roofs. Their predators are wolves, coyotes, bears, lynx, and wolverines. Beavers eat at night as they are nocturnal and they enjoy bark, leaves, twigs, buds of deciduous trees, aquatic vegetation, and also lily roots. Um, and then I have the link to where I got this information. So here, this is a beaver dam. This is what they look like, and they just build them in water, and um, as I said, underwater, so that it's harder for their predators to see them, and harder for some of their predators to go in the water, so that way they can't find them, and it's safe for them to hide. And this is a beaver eating an apple. So as you can see, they enjoy fruits that some people might throw, or like leave behind. They might find a little apple, and they'll just enjoy that. Okay, next, this is the fisher. Fishers are carnivo carnivorous and also amazing predators as they attack from behind. They are one of the few animals to eat porcupines. They also eat mice, chipmunks, and squirrels, and also fawns. A threat to fishers is bobcats as they compete for the same food. In the winter, they live under the snow and stash a carcass, which they feed off. Fishers help make coats and also blankets by giving their fur, and they are important predators. If they went extinct, there'd be an overpopulation of many other animals. But unfortunately, they are also used to make a lot of uh, blankets illegally and stuff like that, and coats, and that way they are going a little bit extinct because people are illegally hunting them just for their fur, and then they just kill them for their fur. So this is a fisher eating a squirrel. And um, yeah, this is a little cute fisher too. Okay, this is a mink. Fishers and mink, they look a little bit similar as you can see. Minks are also carnivores and they eat small mammals like mice, rats, and muskrats, though they also enjoy frogs, crayfish, fish, other insects, eggs, and also ducks. Their predators are owls, wolves, coyotes, and bobcats. Minks prefer areas with water where they make their homes in logs and they dig dens and in the winter, minks still stay in their dens where they store food and then they come back to hunt for more food in the spring. Minks' role in the ecosystem is that they are high on the food chain and are also very amazing predators. So if they went extinct, there'd be an overpopulation of many other animals. So as you can see, all the animals matter because if even one of them goes extinct, then there's going to be an overpopulation of the other animals. So we have to make sure that we're keeping all the animals healthy and still here. Otherwise, we're going to have way too many animals and not enough of another one. So this is a mink eating a fish from the water. They will get them. Oh, sorry. This is a mink house as well. So as you can see, they just they can dig kind of like rabbits, and then they will just stay in their houses. Okay, moving on to otters. Otters are carnivores, they need, lo they need loads of meat to live, so if they don't have enough meat, then they'll actually die. So they need a lot of meat for their bodies. They eat fish, crayfish, and also crabs. Their predators are coyotes, and they live in rivers, lakes, and creeks, and also in dens, and in old beaver lodges underwater in the winter. Otters are amazing predators, so again, if they went extinct, 
So would lots of other animals because they eat a lot of the fish and stuff in the water. This is an otter eating what looks like, I'm not even sure what that is, it's broken apart, but that's an otter eating in the water. They sit on their backs as well. They can like sit on their backs, it's really cool. They're good swimmers. They're really cute. And this is an otter house. So it's it's not, they didn't really make their house, but if there's a hole in an old rock or in a tree, then they'll just find a house there and they'll just make their home in that house. But they don't make their own houses. They just find holes and such to live in. Okay, this is a porcupine. I didn't know that porcupines looked like this before I started researching it because it's more, it's very shaggy it almost looks like, but they're very cute. Porcupines are herbivores. They eat leaves, twigs, and other green plants like clover. Their predators are fishers, coyotes, and also bobcats. Porcupines live in darker places, like in water, holes, and hollows, but in the winter, they stay in dens and sometimes even hunch in trees. Porcupine's meat has been a traditional style for many indigenous Canadians. Their quills are also extremely important for basketry and decorative crafts in the indigenous uh, culture. A lot of people will use their um, like quills for different baskets and basket weaving and just art that they will make. So here's a porcupine eating. Porcu oh, sorry. Porcupines are actually a little bit more social than people think. They are not too scared. So when someone, if you put your hand out, a porcupine might actually come to you. So as you can see, this lady, I'm not sure if this is her pet or what, but she's giving this porcupine an apple because they're not, they're pretty social actually compared to what they look shy, but. Okay, these are some porcupine houses. So they just live again under rock crevices and in rock holes or dens. They like the darker places, as I said. Okay, and one of the last animals I have here is the kitty's hognose bat. And as you can see, they're very tiny. They fit on like a person's, an adult person's finger. Kitty's hognose bats eat bugs, spiders, beetles, small flies, wasps, and also bark lice. They live in caves along rivers where they also hibernate in winter. Their main predators are birds, snakes, squirrels, and also cats. But in terms of what they do for the environment, they are so important as they pollinate and disperse seeds of hundreds of species of plants. That's why they are also known as bumblebee bats. They are known as bumblebee bats because of their small size and also because they help, they're like bumblebees, but they're small little bats as well. So they're really tiny and sweet. And a lot of people keep them as pets too, actually, because they're, of their very small size. They're about the size of an adult uh, person's palm. So they're very small little bats. This is a baby bat. And this is a bumblebee bat eating a spider. So it is kind of like in the way of the spider. It jumped in and it's trying to eat the spider. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, and then we have the opossum. This is probably one of the saddest ones as opossums are used for a lot of ways for that people use them and it's kind of sad, but. So owls, hawks, red foxes, cats, dogs, and also even people eat possums, but they feed on carcasses and waste, as well as cockroaches, mice, and rats. Possums live in woodlands and also shrublands, but in winter live in holes of trees or rock crevices. Possums are so important as they remove dangerous viruses and also bacteria from the environment. They can digest almost anything, including a dead animal's bones. So if we didn't have possums, then we would have a lot of uh, waste lying around and that would be bad for the environment. So possums are very strong, they have very strong stomachs and they can eat anything. So unfortunately they are used a lot of ways for food. As you can see, there's a very food, there's a food here that a lot of people eat. It's called possum pie, and it's made from possum, and it's a pie that people eat as a dessert. So this is a possum pie. It has possum in uh, between the layers, and people also eat possums as side dishes often in restaurants. So uh, you can see someone here has potatoes and some other food, and they also have possum back here. So people eat possums quite often, and it's very interesting. I didn't know that. And they, this is a, them feeding off of a dead carcass, so they don't always hunt their own food. They are like scavengers, and they'll go find whatever dead food is lying around, and they will eat that. And also they will eat other waste, like, you know, just any dead, like, waste, like carcasses and stuff like this. Okay, and then we have the slender blind snake, which looks like a worm. 
Slender blind snakes eat the eggs of termites and ants and get eaten by owls, cats, foxes, and also even other snakes eat them. So they get eaten by their own kind, snakes. They live under moist leaves in logs and holes of ant and also termite nests where they hibernate in winter as well. Slender blind snakes are amazing predators, so without them many other animals would also be overpopulated. Slender blind snakes are about like a long worm, so they're very tiny and small. They look just like worms. As you can see here, they are very small. They're just like worms, but they're snakes. And this is what they eat. They eat eggs of other small animals like ants and termites. So this is it eating an egg, a different eggs it looks like. I don't know what kind of eggs, but white little eggs. Okay, and then this is them getting eaten. So they get eaten by different foxes and stuff like that. So birds, foxes, and just mainly smaller animals because they're so tiny. And then we have the squirrel. Squirrels eat not only nuts, but also plants and meat, as they are omnivores. They eat fungi, seeds, fruit, eggs, small bugs, caterpillars, and also baby animals, even small snakes. So often we think squirrels only eat nuts and they may not have enough food, but the truth is that they have a lot of food that they can eat if they just find seeds and caterpillars and beetles and bugs, then they will eat that as well, not just nuts. Foxes, coyotes, some hawks, and also owls eat them, as well as wild cats, weasels, and snakes. Squirrels live in nests and trees, though some ground squirrels live in grasslands and burrow in holes where they also bury their seeds and forget them in the ground. Without squirrels, we wouldn't have as many trees because they always forget their, seed, their, their seeds of the trees that they were eating. They bury them, they forget where they hid them, and then <laughs> trees will grow. So they help plant trees and make trees. Eating a little apple. And these are some baby squirrels. I love this one because they're on each other's little heads sitting in the nest of a tree, a little hole. And this is it burying one of its seeds. And uh, the other thing about squirrels is when they bury them and they see someone, like even a human coming, they pretend to bury the seed so that the human thinks the seed is there, but then really they shove it in their mouth and they bury it somewhere else because they're worried that that person might take their seed. So then they run away and bury it somewhere else. And they remember most of the time where they bury them, but once they do forget, then they will grow new. Okay, so then lastly, we have the weasel, which is very sweet. It looks like one of those hot dog dogs. Weasels are prey to buzzards, kestrels, and also owls, but they eat rats, mice, voles, rabbits, frogs, birds, and also bird eggs. They live in forests, woodlands, and also marshes, but in winter go under the snow. Weasels are a big benefit for home and also gardens as they keep small animals away because they eat them. Without them, there'd be lots of squirrels disturbing people and an overpopulation of many other animals. So this is a little weasel here. So please subscribe to our channel if you want to and press the bell so that you're notified whenever we upload a video and also like this video and make sure that you comment below if you have any questions at all. Good Thank job. You. Do you have a question? Are there any questions? Looks like yes. yes. Um, do otters eat cheese? I, I don't think so. I'm not sure, but I don't think so because cheese isn't what you find like lying around. So unless a person dropped cheese or gave an otter a cheese, then they wouldn't find it. And do porcupine eat apples? Uh, yeah. Or is it big? Yeah, they do. So, yeah. Uh, all right, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching.